Uh, hello, everybody. So, welcome to the presentation. Uh, we will speak about the search of the true self, contemplation as understood by Thomas Merton. Uh, to start with, I invite you to short preparation uh, to this talk. Sorry. Uh, we will try to a little bit contemplate or meditate uh, with this little piece of guitar music. We enter in, into the talk about our deepest self, our true self. And our entry point is this cloudy and cold autumn, but a beautiful river. Let's see where we can end our journey. Okay, let's move next. So, no, not to the music, sorry. Mm -hmm. What we will cover today? Uh, it is two, uh, there are two parts here. True self, we will speak about how true self understand what happens, I don't know. <laughs> how true self understand in different uh, areas. Then I will introduce Thomas Merton and explain his theory of the true and false self. And then we move to the contemplation and how contemplation connect us to the true self. Uh, since ancient time, uh, human being trying to find how the inner world structured and sorry, what's happened? I don't know. Uh, and how they can connect to the best part of their self. Uh, for instance, Aristotle claimed that knew us or divine intellect, this is our true self. Uh, also, according to the uh, theory of Erickson, who, who invented his theory of eight development stages, uh, human in different uh, stage of their life trying to find the answer for different questions. For instance, from three to five years, child questioning, am I good or bad? Then, in the school age, this question changed to how can I be good? And then, from 12 till 8, the question who I am and where I'm going. And for instance, after 40 years, human beings usually try to contribute for helping others and to make the world a better place. And in all these stages, we find in these answers and experience some kind of crisis. And in all these stages, we try to find the better ver version of ourselves, our true self. So, according to the popular beliefs, people also uh, think that the true self is kind of idealized structure inside us, where, which is exists, first of all, secondly, which is better than our self indeed, and which is represent our true self. The topic of the true self is also covered intensively in psychology. We will skip uh, the thoughts of Freud and uh, Kahoot and uh, Jung due to the lack of time. But Donald Winnicott was a British psychologist. He was first one of the first who in uh, invented the theory of the true and false self. According to his understanding, the false self, this is the image that we present to the public. And the, our true self is our emotional naturality. Usually, uh, our false self can be developed when we fear or when we try to fit to some public or self-images. And it's very, very benefit when we try to copy others. According to Winnicott, this also our false self, we start, start to grow when we are still in our mother's womb. Uh, but one of the distinguished features, how we can understand that our uh, true self is acting right now, it's spontaneity. Because false self is unable to do any spontaneous actions. So therefore, the first thing that comes in our mind when we see something or meet somebody, this is our true self. Let's have this idea in mind because we will use it for a conclusion. So now we come to the Thomas Merton. Uh, to Thomas Merton, yeah. Thomas Merton was a famous 
Catholic and interreligious figure, uh, and one of the most fruitful spiritual writers overall. He was the author of the more than 19 different publications and also the author of the second in popularity spiritual biography after San Agustin Confession. Uh, he was the most popular monk from the United States and the most popular monk from the 20th century. So maybe you know him, I don't know. Uh, his life also divided for two different periods. He lived 22nd years as a monk, uh, sorry, yeah. and 26 years he lived before monastery. Uh, he was born in 1915 uh, during the F First World War, and his father was a famous painter, Owen Merton. You can Google him with uh, interesting pictures. Uh, therefore, his family traveled a lot. They live in Spain, in the United States, in Britain, in different islands. And uh, young Thomas was not religious in his, uh, uh, in his childhood but he was baptized in the, child, uh, in the Church of England. Uh, and then, uh, as a student uh, of his time, he led rather not very moral life. He can go to the bar, drink a lot, smoke a lot, dance, and have like, a relationship with different romantic, with different uh, uh, women. So, but, I mean, he also, it was habitual to that period, the sortings, it was also kind of enlightenment. And uh, he had a prestigious education. He graduated from Cambridge, uh, and also he had a degree, master degree from the Columbia University in English literature. He made his thesis on William Blake. It's also an interesting figure, a uh, British uh, painter and uh, writer from 18th century. Uh, so, in the years in, when Thomas Merton was 21, he first time visited Rome and was astonished by the power of Byzantine mosaics. In an age of 23, uh, he already converted to Catholicism. After two years being Catholic, he uh, decided to go to the Franciscan monastery, but was rejected. And on the second year, in the 41, before the, uh, before the first world, uh, Second World War started, he was uh, admitted as a novice to the Trappist Monastery uh, of Our Lady of Gethsemane in Kentucky, U.S. Uh, the Trappist Monastery have very strict schedule. Uh, it's even more stricter than an Orthodox monastery. You should get up at 2 a.m. every day. Then you have very, very tight schedule with a lot of prayers, uh, spiritual uh, reading, work. And it's last after 7 o'clock when you go to bed. Also, in the Trappist Monastery, it's prohibited to have any talks. Uh, you can speak only with your spiritual master. So, but Merton's life was not usual, because uh, after seven years being in the monastery, he published his most famous publication, Seven Story Mountains, which became a world bestseller. And after that, he was uh, allowed to continue his writing, writing as an active form of his contemplation. So, then he started to work very, very hard and produce maybe one or several publications every year after that. Uh, then he became a priest, then master of scholastic, master of novices, and in 1965, uh, uh, he became uh, a first hermit in the history of Abbey. He also made a lot of different social contributions, criticized Vietnamese war and racism in the United States, and connected to a lot to the big number of famous people of uh, that time to be like in tune with modernity. And uh, in 68, when he first time visited uh, Bangkok, it was his first journey after 27 years in the monastery, he suddenly died as a result of electrocution in his room. Uh, I will just switch a little bit uh, the way. voice of Thomas Merton. So each man our man himself uh, is not just in paradise right in the beginning he's not just created in paradise but he is paradise see man is paradise and of course you get this in saint augustine you get this in if you want to read this kind of thing you read up some of the ancient commentaries on genesis you read saint ambrose and saint augustine and the greek fathers and gregory of nyssa and people like that on genesis and you get this kind of approach i don't know where isaac of stella got it but obviously it's traditional and man is therefore not just man in paradise, but man is Adam and Eve and the serpent, see. 
So you see, uh, he said, man is a, a Adam and Eve and a serpent. It's very interesting. Uh, so, uh, Merton was actively researched uh, and taught his novices about spirituality and mysticism. He discovered many, if not all, Christian mystical writers from Catholic, Orthodox, and Protestant traditions. In his later work, he also was influenced by Eastern religions of Zen Buddhism and Sufi Islam. He was brilliantly educated intellectual, and he was very good in combining concepts from different areas and explaining them innovatively but simply. I will intensively quote Merton, and therefore I cannot always indicate it, but when you hear some elegant way of expression, it's definitely a new quote of Merton. I invite, uh, so yeah. Now we will move to the explanation of his theory of the true self. If it's allow me to do that. Yes, I give you the first definition. There is only one problem on which all my existence, my peace and my happiness depend to discover myself in discovering God. If I find him, I will find myself. And if I find my true self, I will find him. Uh, Merton's definition of the true self changed through the years. Later, he also said that true self is a point of nothingness, which is inaccessible to the fantasies of our mind or the brutalities of our own will. It is a point of the pure glory of God in us. It's like a pure diamond. But I have no program for the scene, it's only given, but the gate of heaven is everywhere. Therefore, as the gates of heaven is everywhere, there is several contributing factors which help us to find the true self. First of all, this love for others. The true self can be found not only in God, but in other men as well. I will never be able to find myself if I isolate myself from the rest of mankind, as if I were a different kind of being. Saints, like doctors and nurses, were healed by themselves and now comprehend how to heal others. To be made in the image of God means to have love as an existential reason. Love is my true identity. Selfishness uh, is my true, selflessness is my true identity. Love is my true character. Love is my name. Also, it's important to be free from the pleasure principle. The mind that is prisoner of the pleasure and the will that it's captive for their own desires only, cannot accept the seeds of the higher pleasure and the supernatural desire. How can I receive the seeds of freedom if I'm in love with the slavery? Merton also referred to the Gregory of Nyssa, who said a very good image, that we cover ourselves with the pleasures like in a spider net. Uh, so the another thing which is important is humility. But humility means it's not Humility means not to be like everybody. In contrast, it means to be precisely the person you actually are before God. Therefore, if you possess the humility to be yourself, you will not be like anyone else in the whole universe. Uh, solitude. Solitude also means not a physical isolation. It means escaping from the world in terms of escaping from selfishness. Escape from the city that belongs to those who are constantly in the fight for possessing limited resources and things and aiming for the monopoly of goods and pleasures without sharing it with others. Creativity. Being himself a poet and writer, Merton often compares religious and creative life. In his opinion, many poets are not become poets as many religious men are not become saints for the same reason. They never succeeded in being themselves. Selfishness. As I said uh, before, overcoming own ego, it's very important to find the true self. In order to find myself, I should go out myself. Also, being a nature can provoke us to become more true self. Merton also spent a lot of time in different locations, like in the wood, in the river, and so on. Now we will introduce you the, the opposite term, the false self. Merton uh, climbs, to say I was born and seen is to say I come into the world into the false, with a false self. Everyone is shadowed by the illusory person of a false self. This is a, a man I want myself to be, but who cannot exist. This illusory person aims to exist outside God, his love and will, and therefore it's simply a mirage. 
Merton also assumed that people do not have enough expertise in recognizing the illusion. Therefore, the most humans, for most humans, their false self and false self of others become the biggest objective reality. Uh, as we, uh, uh, as we understand it in the beginning, uh, according to Merton's opinion, uh, our false self caused by original sin. And the development of the false self is linked with a copy of others. It's very easy to imitate in what is popular, than to create and to discover your personal role. Therefore, I think actually means as they think, and I want means as they want. Also, the interaction between uh, the true and false self, uh, you can find examples when you, for, for, for instance, need to make any decision. When you feel very heavy, very dark, this is probably the activity of the false self. When you feel light, peacefully, and easygoing, this is activity of the true self, perhaps. So, now we move to the contemplation part. You see that uh, there are at least five books that I could recommend you to read about contemplation, which was uh, written by Thomas Merton. Contemplative prayer is a deep and simplified spiritual activity where the mind and will are fused into one. We have left everything else and desire even to leave our own selves to be with God. He alone is our desire in our life and nothing else can give us any joy. Contemplation is the highest expression of man's mental and spiritual life, a spiritual wonder. It's a gratitude for life, for consciousness, and for existence. Uh, contem uh, contemplation is always beyond available system, knowledges, and concepts. It's fulfillment of all experience. And all experience disappeared to be produced repeatedly on a new level. The poet entered into himself in order to create. The contemplative man entered into God in order to be created. Contemplation is often could be associated with spiritual pleasure or lack of activity, but it's in fact deep and intense supernatural activity with the fruits which are not recognized. The aims of contemplation is to find contact and unity with God. It means the ultimate secret of this unity means that we totally follow in God's will in things that we cannot control and are perfectly obedient to God in things that depend on our own violation. Also, as in the case with the true self, Merton claimed that it's important to have humility, unity with others, and the frequency of practice of the contemplation, of course, but you cannot get to God through any system. Also, Merton warned about spiritual guidance, which is necessary for contemplation. Otherwise, you can feel kind of uh, spiritual pleasure, which is, could be very risky for those who are not experienced in spiritual life. Also, Merton said, importance of the contemplative activity for deification because it is the highest and most necessary spiritual activity when man and God unite in one. And lastly, Merton claims that it should be in the center of the church mission. Otherwise, if we not include the contemplative prayer into the real church life, the religion can turn into this opium des folkes about which Marx spoke. So, we come into the concluding part. Uh, I just present you the small model uh, how different uh, kinds of the true and false self uh, correlated, which we talked about. So, you see the first layer is the false self of Merton, which is the biggest layer which is within us. The secondly, the false self of uh, Winnicott, which is a little bit uh, smaller, but also exists here, near the false self of the Meriton. And in the center, in the very center, there is true self, the hidden image of God inside us. And I just give you an example. For instance, if we see some person who we need, but have a problem, for instance, with alcohol, what do we think, first of all? Do we think something, do we feel love or we feel criticism? 
if we feel criticism at the first idea that comes to our mind, and then we, by intellectually effort, move our consciousness to understanding that we need to love this person, that means that we are still in the progress of our spiritual development. But if, first of all, we think that this is our brother or sister that we need to love, and this is the first spontaneous idea that comes in our mind, that means that our true self in psychological and theological understanding it's already close to the image of God. So, finally, what was unique about Merton's message? He's an expert in spirituality and a bright intellectual, and he bases his reflection in a wide range of Christian mystical literature. So, he is spiritually and intellectually competent in connecting different approaches to the most important questions of human existence. He used the well-known concepts of spiritual life and psychology and turned them upside down. Merton challenges us to rethink and reformulate the old slogans and patterns of our thinking and behavior. And contemplation is a way to do it practically. In more general sense, contemplation understands by Merton as constant being in God's presence and doing everything as prayer and contemplation. To imagine what it means to be in God always, we can use image of being in the water. For instance, when we dive into the river or in the lake, we are surrounded by water. It's very close to image that we're inside God. So, and also I see the correlation with uh, Irina's speech about Martha and Maria. We see an example of Thomas Merton, uh, the pure approach of Mary. But I think that this is solution for a uh, dilemma of Martha and Maria, because Merton, uh, he claims that contemplation should be uh, first of all, an experience and special state of mind and change of mind. And we offer all our activities, all our lives as a form of contemplation. When we work, study, take care of our family, this is our contemplation. And in this contemplation, we can gradually find our true self by recognizing the image of God in ourself, in others. And to be saint means to be my true self, which is could be open through the contemplation, which is a love and sense of this life. Thank you very much for listening. Aita.